वेलकम टू डेंटल नोट्स एंड नमोनिक्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द ओरल अल्सर्स ओरल अल्सर्स आर लोकलाइज ब्रेक्स और डिसकंटिन्यूटीज इन द म्यूकोजल लाइनिंग ऑफ द ओरल कैविटी दे आर अमंग द मोस्ट कॉमन लीजन्स एनकाउंटर्ड इन क्लिनिकल डेंटल प्रैक्टिस एंड पेशेंट ऑफन कम्स विद पेन डिस्कवर्ड एंड डिफिकल्टी इन स्पीकिंग ईटिंग एंड सॉलोइंग oral cavity is prone to ulcers due to its rapid cell turnover exposure to mechanical trauma and contact with the irritants like spicy foods alcohol or tobacco additionally the presence of uh, diverse microbes in the conditions like stress and the nutritional deficiencies can trigger ulcer formation and these factors collectively weaken the mouth's mucosa making it more vulnerable to ulcers now let's talk about the various uh, parts of an oral ulcer oral ulcer can be divided uh, broadly into ulcer base which is the bottom layer of the ulcer and it is often covered with a whitish or the yellowish layer of the fibrin giving the ulcer a distinctive appearance the color and the appearance of the base can provide clues about the type of the ulcer a white or the yellow base is common in aphthous ulcer then uh, the second part is a floor of the ulcer it is a deepest part of the ulcer typically exposed connective tissue often painful and sensitive part clinically a smooth or granular uh, floor can help in identifying the type of the ulcer for example a granular floor might suggest an infection the key diagnostic feature between the floor of the mouth and the base of the ulcer is the floor is superficial part which is observed clinically while base is evaluated through palpation or imaging to assess the ulcer's depth and severity floor of the ulcer is the area which lies above the base and it is in the direct contact with the external environment while the base lies beneath the floor and includes deeper tissues like connective tissue or bone ulcer margin or the edge is a area which is a surrounding boundary of an ulcer often slightly raised or red due to inflammation this is very important to identify a particular type of the oral ulcers the type of the margins can be an ulcer can have a sharp margin as uh, it is found in the aphthous ulcer uh, the margins are well defined borders it may be indurated or hardened margin which suggest a possible malignancy in case of non hernia ulcers like oral cancers the margins may be rolled out which may indicate an underlying pathological conditions often seen in chronic ulcers diffuse margins uh, are distributed irregularly and they are often seen in infections or autoimmune conditions undermined margins are uh, visible in uh, underlying infections like tuberculosis mnemonic sir do you uh, should help you to recall the key types of the ulcer margins and their clinical uh, implications quickly so pause the video and uh, try to memorize it a ring like uh, uh, red ring which is present around the ulcer which is caused by the inflammation uh, is called as erythematous or red halo this halo often signifies a body immune response to an ulcer the distinct red halo is typical in aphthous ulcers showing the active inflammation around the ulcers if we talk about the surrounding tissue the area of the tissues around the ulcers which may appear swollen red or normal may indicate the severity or the type of the ulcers if they are inflamed or swollen it suggest an acute active ulcer and if the healthy surrounding tissues indicate uh, it is the infection is of uh, more localized issue regarding the etiology of oral ulcers the cause is multifactorial though the common causes are uh, mechanical factors like physical trauma which means accidentally biting the cheek constant friction from the braces dentures a uh, tissue damage which leads to the inflammation slow healing and causes the ulcers biological and the chemical factors like infection acidic or uh, spicy foods can also trigger the immune response acid release which can damage the mucosal lining lead to the ulcer formation now we'll discuss about the classifications of uh, oral ulcers the oral ulcers may be classified on the basis of their etiology on the basis of the duration on the clinical presentation and as well as the size of the 
ulcer. On the basis of the duration of onset, we have acute ulcers or chronic ulcers. Acute ulcers are the sudden onset and short duration and they are painful. While the chronic ulcers are the persistent ulcers which are very slow to heal and may be painless as well. Example of acute ulcers is the traumatic ulcers and an example of the chronic ulcer is the tuberculous ulcer. A duration of acute ulcers uh, is less than 3 weeks and if it is more than 3 weeks then they are classified as the chronic ulcers. Apart from acute and chronic ulcers we have one more, more category recurrent ulcers. The recurrent ulcers have the recurrent episodes with the period of healing in between. Examples are recurrent arthritis ulcers and certain viral infections can also be a cause of recurrent ulcers in the oral cavity. On the basis of the number of the ulcers, uh, we may categorize them into solitary ulcers, which is a single ulcer localized and easier to treat, uh, like uh, traumatic ulcers or single aphthous ulcer. Multiple ulcers uh, can also be there. They are often associated with the infections or the immune conditions. Example is uh, herpetic ulcers, recurrent aphthous ulcers. Single ulcers are often larger, more painful and often associated with trauma, burns or herpetic lesions. While the multiple lesions may indicate conditions like recurrent aphthous stomatitis or viral diseases like HSV and often involve a systemic factor as well. Based on the etiology, uh, ulcerations can be classified into those which are from the mechanical, chemical, thermal injury. That means they are the traumatic in nature. They may be infectious autoimmune, neoplastic and nutritional deficiency. Traumatic can be due to the ill-fitting dentures, infectious may be the herpetic ulcers, pemphigus vulgaris uh, can be a cause of autoimmune, uh, cause of uh, oral ulcers, squamous cell carcinoma is the most common neoplastic uh, cause of uh, non-healing ulcers in the oral cavity. A nutritional deficiency like iron deficiency uh, ulcer can also lead to ulceration in the mouth. The basis of appearance of the oral uh, ulcer, we may uh, classify them into simple ulcers, indurated ulcers and pseudomembranous ulcers. Simple ulcers have well-defined regular uh, edges like uh, we find in the minor aphthous ulcers. In case of indurated ulcers, they have the raised and hard edges. Uh, they are persistent and this may suggest malignancies as in gamma or the malignant ulcers in squamous cell carcinoma. Pseudomembranous ulcers are covered by a white layer and they are often infectious. Ulcers in uh, candidiasis or diphtheria, they have a pseudomembrane covering over them. Now we will classify them on the basis of the size. Uh, we may classify them into the minor ulcers or the major ulcers. The minor ulcers are those ulcers which have size less than 1 cm and those ulcers which is having the size more than 1 cm, they are the major ulcers. Major ulcers take a very long time to heal and may scar as well. Like major aphthous ulcers and uh, ulcers from the traumatic cases may be classified into the major ulcers. Minor ulcers are less in size they are uh, less than one centimeter they heal very quickly they rarely scar example is the minor aphthous ulcer we'll talk about the, the each and every ulcers in detail first of all we will start with the acute ulcers acute ulcers in the oral cavity first of all the traumatic ulcers traumatic ulcers as it is self-explanatory it is due to some injury it may be a physical injury chemical injury or the mechanical injury it is uh, characterized by irregular shape which is often painful uh, often with a red inflamed border it typically heals within a few days to two weeks once irritation is removed we'll talk about the minor aphthous ulcers which are also known as canker sores they are common painful lesions that typically occur inside the Mouth cavity, they present as a small shallow ulcers that heal on their own within a short period of time. Size varies uh, from 1 to 5 millimeters. That means they are very small, relatively small in size. Shape uh, is round or oval with a well-defined border, making them easy to identify. The color of the ulcer 
in the center is often white or yellowish which is surrounded by red or erythematous border this color contrast helps distinguish them from other oral lesions if we talk about the surface of the ulcer it has a shallow base typically clean without any pus or exudate this makes it different from the infection that produces more substantial discharge regarding the location the minor aphthous ulcers typically appear on non keratinized mucosal surfaces these include the inner lip cheek soft palate and under the tongue all of which are mucosal moist area that don't have a tough outer layer number of the lesions if we talk about uh, the most people experience one to three lesions at a time although it is possible to have more particularly during the recurrent episodes these uh, ulcers are usually painful especially when eating and speaking due to their location in the sensitive areas of the mouth however the pain is generally mild to moderate minor aphthous ulcers heal within 7 to 8, 10 days without the need of the treatment they usually do not cause permanent scarring once they resolve herpetic ulcers are caused by the herpes simplex virus which is present with a distinct features such as small painful vesicular lesions primarily on the keratinized mucosal surface like lip or palates these ulcers tend to heal within few weeks but may reoccur particularly during stress and other triggers the presence of systemic uh, symptoms such as fever and swollen lymph nodes and the clustering of uh, lesions are the key diagnostic indicator for hepatic lesions now we'll discuss about uh, uh, recurrent aphthous uh, stomatitis it is characterized by persistent painful oral ulcers lasting days to months we have uh, three uh, different or distinct forms of the aphthous ulceration which are characterized by the size of the ulcer the number of the ulcers present in one time the length of the time to resolve and the presence of any scarring after the healing on the basis of this uh, recurrent aphthous stomatitis can be divided into three subgroups first one is the minor aphthous ulcers second is major aphthous ulcers and third subgroup is herpetiform aphthous ulcers in case of minor apathy painful ulcers which are usually 1 cm have a fibrinous base surrounded by a red inflammatory halo and occur on the non keratinized mucosa ulcers appear in crops of 1 to 6 that heal within 10 days in the absence of scarring on the other hand major apathy differs from the minor apathy in their size which is more than 1 cm pain and healing time which will usually be several weeks in case of major apathy and when uh, major uh, apathy they heal there can be a scarring present the third sub group is herpetiform ulceration it is a least common form of uh, recurrent uh, aphthous uh, stomatitis these are multiple pinpoint ulcers ranging in size from 1 to 3 mm that are markedly painful and they fuse into the larger ulcers after a few days they can take approximately 14 days to heal but do not scar helping to differentiate them from the major aphthous ulcers they tend to affect the ventral tongue and the upper lip apart from these causes ulcers are also associated or the manifestations of the uh, systemic diseases as well oral ulcers can sometimes be the manifestation of underlying systemic conditions Uh, these systemic uh, causes uh, often present with recurring or persistent ulcers that do not respond to standard local treatments they may be associated with autoimmune disease like uh, systemic uh, lupus erythematosus pemphigus vulgaris bullous pemphigoid similar to pemphigus vulgaris but more common in older adults it also leads to the blistering of oral ulcers then gastrointestinal disorders uh, oral ulcers are common in uh, crohn's disease particularly the form of deep irregular shaped ulcers located on the buccal mucosa or palate celiac disease is a autoimmune disorder which affects a small intestine but it may also cause a recurrent oral ulcer especially in the tongue and cheek due to gluten intolerance nutritional deficiency of vitamin b12 iron deficiency and amen the folate all these can lead to ulcers on the tongue or the mucosal surface 
Sometimes ulcers in the oral cavity may be a reaction towards the medication also known as the drug induced ulcers. Drug induced ulcers are the painful recurrent ulcers often with a temporal relation to new or changed medication. So how to identify a malignant uh, oral ulcer? Malignant oral ulcers exhibit specific features that set them apart from benign ones. So let's break them down. First of all, duration and healing. Persistent ulcer lasting over 3 weeks without healing raises suspicion. Irregular borders, hardening around the ulcer suggest malignancy. Sign of tissue necrosis may also appear. Malignant ulcers often cause severe pain and may bleed spontaneously. A foul odor may result from infection or tissue destruction. Common sites for the location of malignant ulcers is lateral tongue, floor of the mouth, soft palate and lip mucosa. Fixed or immobile ulcers indicate deeper tissue involvement. Associated symptoms uh, such as swollen lymph nodes in the neck or the jaw, systemic signs like weight loss, fatigue or fever may indicate advanced cancer. Oral ulcers can significantly affect daily life, so proper management is essential. Let's explore how to approach them step by step. Initial assessment needs to have the thorough history of the patient plus clinical examination. In the history taking, uh, we check the ulcer duration, uh, symptoms uh, associated with the ulcers like pain, fever, weight loss, triggers of the ulcers, trauma, stress or diet or systemic conditions such as Crohn's disease or lupus. In the clinical uh, examination, we inspect the size, shape and the location of the ulcers and we have to look for the signs like lymphadenopathy or systemic uh, skin lesions also. Based on clinical examination history taking, uh, differential diagnosis is ruled out and based on the laboratory uh, test for persistent or suspicious lesions, we uh, finally uh, make a definitive diagnosis. Regarding the general management uh, uh, which includes symptomatic relief and anti-inflammatory treatment to the patient, symptomatic relief uh, includes the use of the topical analgesics uh, like uh, lidocaine, antiseptic mouthwashes and the patient is advised to avoid irritants like spicy food. In anti-inflammatory treatment, the patient is advised uh, corticosteroids and also uh, the patient is provided with supplements of vitamin B12 or uh, folic acid or the patient is advised to use protective gels. Apart from providing a symptomatic uh, relief uh, for the patient, it is at most important to remove the etiology which is the main cause of ulcers. Otherwise, ulcers may reoccur time and time again. Patient is also educated to avoid triggers like stress, trauma, maintain oral hygiene and follow a soft diet. The patient should also advise well about the importance of early intervention and regular follow-ups. Monitoring chronic ulcers regularly and reassessing if the healing does not occur within two weeks. For non-healing ulcers, due to the malignancy, prioritize pain relief, nutrition and the emotion support. Palliative care is must for severe cases. So this was all about the oral ulcers. Thank you for watching. Uh, we hope you found this uh, content insightful and please uh, go through the summary tables as well. Uh, it will be helpful for you for the better understanding the topic. If you uh, like this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up, share it with others and hit the subscribe button for more educational content like this. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Have a nice day.